Interesting Science xin trân trọng kính chào quý khán thính giả của đài truyền hình SBTN và cũng xin chào đón quý vị vào chương trình Heart to Heart với Christine Sa trong tuần này. À, kính thưa quý vị, trong chương trình hôm nay, Christine xin à, mang đến với quý vị một câu chuyện à, thật là cảm động à, về một anh thanh niên Việt Nam mang à, bệnh ung thư máu thưa quý vị và trong khi uh, trong lúc anh ấy đang chờ đợi một người hiến tủy uh, phù hợp cho anh ấy thì anh ấy đã thực hiện một trang website uh, với địa chỉ là teammatthew.org uh, và qua trang đó Christine đã tìm hiểu và um, đã uh, hiểu biết nhiều hơn về cái bệnh này và những cách để mà giúp đỡ những bệnh nhân này uh, kính thưa quý vị Christine Sa um, xin giới thiệu buổi phỏng vấn của Christine với anh Matthew Nguyễn About 20 minutes later, a doctor walked by and said, hey, you probably have leukemia, just like that. But, you know, I didn't think anything of it yet. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I uh, had a bone marrow biopsy. And the following day, doctor came in and said, hey, I have some good news. Uh, you have leukemia, but it's curable. So that, that was the beginning of uh, my journey. Hello, my name is Matthew Nguyen. I'm 27 years old, and I urgently need your help. In 2007, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. I know that uh, there was a friend that you made. Her name is Michelle Macon, right? And uh, she also had a blog that people came to read, and, and, and I heard that you two had been speaking. Um, Michelle has now passed away because of the leukemia. How did you feel that day when you read her blog? Um, the day that she... The, the, day, the day you that realized that, that... That she had passed away. <laughs> it was kind of surreal because I had just spoken to her like two weeks before that. And we, we, since she lived up north, every time I visited, we, we tried to meet up, but our schedules just didn't match up, so I never got to meet her face to face. But I, I, like you said, I felt like I, I knew her through her blog. And um, I met her mom many times. And, and Michelle and I had a lot of similarities, age and what we had and everything, so I can kind of connect and her mom connects to me a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I felt like that could be me. I could be the one passing away, you know. Later down the line, someone else could be, you know, reading my blog and reading that I passed away. And it scares me, but I can't really do anything about it. So I try not to let that hold me down too much. But it's always there in the back of my mind that that could be me. And every breath we drew was hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's a love story behind this, I know. Uh, I believe your fiance, Chloe, and, and, uh, and you have met and started preparing a wedding before you found out about the leukemia, right? Yeah. And uh, I guess the, the leukemia slowed things down since, but she's been by your side. So um, how do you feel about that? There's just, there's no words to explain how, I, how much I love her and how much, you know, how much she cared to just stick by my side. At first it was, you know, I, I guess I felt like, you know, that's what your significant other is supposed to do. And then after going through so many ups and downs, there was a point where I felt like I'm holding her back. And I, I, I even thought about telling her, you know, if I don't want to hold your life back or put your life on hold, if I, I won't be upset or anything if you, you want to walk away. Mm. And I. You know, I just wanted her to be happy. I wanted her to live her, her life. I didn't want her to live my life. Yeah. Um, but she said, no, you know, we're going to get this through. We're going to go, we're going to get through this together, no matter what. And she would always remind me. And for the first, I want to say six to eight months in the mm -hmm. hospital, she stayed in the hospital with me every single night. But she's always been by my side. And no matter what work, doesn't matter. She would take the day off and come spend a day with me during the week. Um, and on the weekends, and she would do work there, and we would live our semi-normal life together. <laughs> so 
about two weeks. Mm. Um, I got really sick and I got a really bad blood infection and I had uh, spots all over me like chicken pox. And I still have the spots all over my skin today. And they, they haven't, it's gotten a lot better, but it's literally all over my body. Yeah, yeah it looks spots. like like you're a leopard. <laughs> yeah, I want to dress up like a, a leopard for Halloween. But, um, uh -huh. but yeah, at that time I got really sick, so maybe, you know, my body wasn't ready at the time. Maybe. And that was a sign. I mean, you know, we, I'll never know why, but you know, uh, I'll learn about it in the future and maybe, maybe that was the reason. Mm -hmm. um, but the donor I did have, um, who we found, wasn't a perfect match for me either. Um, but I was, I was so sick at the time and um, I didn't really have many other choices. Mm -hmm. So the doctor said, you know what, this is the best, best thing we should do for you right now. And he went ahead and went through it and I got lucky I'm, I'm here today. You I'm are. still breathing. You are. And, and just you talking to me right now is, I think is going to make a huge difference in so many other patients' lives that are looking for bone marrow donors. So you, you just said right now you got so sick that they had to do the transplant even though the match wasn't ideal. What does so sick mean? They never really told me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think my doctor or my parents wanted to tell me, but there was one time my mom tried to explain it to me. Um, she said the doctor took my mom and dad out to a separate room because usually he, <clears throat> he tells me everything mm -hmm. and then I explain it to my parents. But mm -hmm. at this point I was so sick, I was, I want to say I was in and out of, you know, in and out, sleeping in and out and I didn't really know what was going on. So I took my parents into another room and said, um, you know, there's not much else we could do. And we, the only thing we can do now is to give him um, white blood cells from other, other people to fight the infection, to help get me better. Mm -hmm. um, so they did this for two weeks, the two weeks where I don't remember. And it, because of that, it, those cells, um, I guess, fought the infection off for me and I got better. And I had this small window where I was healthy enough again to where my, my body could withstand the chemotherapy and the transplant. And that's when they went ahead and did the transplant. So I'm thinking, you know, if I didn't have those white blood cells from those other donors mm -hmm. at the time, then I probably wouldn't have made it. Well, I'm glad it went that way because it seems like your operation went well. And you seem well. <laughs> I feel well. Yeah, and you're here, which is a great, uh, a great thing. It's great news. And I know just before, just before we started shooting, Matthew and I were talking about um, how, how you want to continue to just raise more awareness um, for leukemia patients, for patients that need bone marrow donors. Um, it is as easy as you just, you go to, uh, the website is asianmarrow.org, right? And you just go and you follow the instructions on, on how to register. It can be sent to your home, right? You fill out a form that's about um, three pages. Uh, you fill out information so that they can contact you um, if you're ever a match. And then there's four cotton swabs. Uh, you rub it for about 10 seconds in each corner of your mouth just to collect DNA samples. And then they, they run it through a system and they keep your record there until you're uh, at the age of 60. And once you're a match with someone, they'll contact you and you come in to do more uh, additional testing, confirmational testing to make sure that you're a really good match. And then if you're chosen as the donor, you come in to do a physical to make sure that you're healthy because they want to make sure the, the donor is perfectly fine. It's not going to harm the donor. And then um, they set up a date and you go in and you, you donate your stem cells. And, and, it's, and, it's and, and the, that. Right, the donation date is just, it's just sort of one day one out day. of your yeah. life and you can save mm -hmm. an entire other life, right? Yep, it's yeah. easy as that. I mean, the, the small amount of pain that you, you'll uh, go through it doesn't compare to the the life that you're going to save. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're giving someone life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it is as easy as going to the website. It's just asianmarrow.org, and then of course your website is teammatthew.org, which I encourage you, Matt. Please update your <laughs> blog because some of us read <laughs> all the time. Um, and I guess I just want to say thank you again. Do you have any final words that you might want to say to our audience at home? Um. I just want to say thank you to everybody that supported me these uh, past few months. Um, I've met many great people and uh, I just want to continue giving back now because um, it's, the only, it's the only thing to do now is to help other people as well because I'm not the only one out there. There's, there's thousands of uh, Vietnamese people who, who need a bone marrow donor so 
if you can, please register. Um, it takes only about 10 minutes of your time, and you can save a life. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Kính thưa quý khán thính giả, à, để tìm hiểu thêm về những cách à, ghi danh à, để làm một người hiến tủy, à, quý khán thính giả có thể vào trang website asianmarrow.org Asian à, và à, quý vị có thể đọc hết những cách để mà mình ghi danh và giúp đỡ một người bệnh nhân ung thư máu. À, Christine hy vọng là chương trình hôm nay đã mang đến à, một chút niềm à, À, niềm yêu thương à, vào những nơi tư gia của quý khán thính giả trong tuần này Xin kính chúc quý vị một ngày rất là vui vẻ và hạnh phúc à, hết sức bình an và Christian cũng xin hẹn gặp lại quý vị trong tuần sau Xin kính chào quý vị There are no more roses at my door No more love songs, no more calls I'm not waiting anymore For a carriage to the ball Leave your thank yous by the